We'll be making history this week, and our next guests are pivotal leaders in what they are calling an animal revolution. Please welcome to the studio Ingrid and Newkirk and James Aspie. Welcome, and really, what an honor. What an honor to have you. Well, and very nice you. of you to have us. And it's so nice to see you both, like, making the trip all the way from the States and from Australia. That obviously says a lot about, you know, what a big deal this weekend's march is. Oh, the whole world is watching. Everybody wants to see what's happening, because it's true. Israel is really setting the standard in a lot of ways. You've got fabulous food, marvelous produce. Um, even your military can wear non-leather boots. So so yes, there's a great deal of interest here, and the march says the power is in your hands. And I think Israelis have that chance to show that that's true. They're going to take it seriously, and they're going to really do things for animals, not eat them, not wear them, not experiment on them, not buy things that are tested on them, not use them for entertainment, not abuse them in any way. It's going to start here. Wow, really amazing. And for you, I mean, even is this even well known in you know in your circles in Australia that Israel is a you know, really good epicenter for for this type of activism and love for our friends, our I, animal friends? I think vegans all around the world are aware that there is a huge amount of vegans and vegan activism happening in Israel. And, but it's not just in Israel. We're growing all around the world. This is a movement that is growing so fast because awareness is being raised in so many different ways. And we are starting to it's blatantly obvious now that we do not need to consume animals to be healthy. We'll be far healthy without them. There's such an environmental destruction happening because of animal agriculture. And in all the ways that we use animals, it's completely unnecessary. So veganism is really only the thing that makes sense. And that's why the movement is growing all over the world, but especially in Israel. And, and for you, I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years. And in the next section, we're going to talk more about it because, I mean, your backstories are both so fascinating. But, you know, what is it about this one that it makes it the biggest march in history? I mean, because there's so much activism, especially coming from, from Pete all these years. Why is this one so revolutionary in particular? I'm not sure, other than I think the numbers will tell a story. There's a lot of online activism. A lot of people are doing things for animals in other ways. But there's a coming together is always important. And I think in this country where there's so much strife between human beings, it's really marvelous to see there's an understanding even of compassion and peace at the level of those who don't exactly look like us, who don't exactly behave like us, but who feel hunger, pain, thirst, love, joy in exactly the same right. way. It's a great lesson, really. Absolutely. It's I mean, listen, we're all, and listen, we're all God's creations. I mean, animals have souls, a vegetable, you know, I, I study that, like, there, it's so for, to be in a place that is kind of a cradle for a lot of conflict, it must be interesting to see is like, this is something that unites all of us, it, uh, you know, because it's not about one religion or one race hating another. It's yeah. about, you know, helpless creatures that need us to right. put it in our hands. And it's right? already in our hands. The problem is caused by us. Right. You know, this isn't something that's just happening. It happens because we create a demand for animal products when we buy meat or dairy or eggs or leather or any of these things. And that's such an empowering thing because although the massive issue and the problem is happening because of us, it also can end because of us as well when we simply just change the things we buy and make vegan choices. We create so much devastation to this world and to these animals but at the same in the same way with just making different choices we can end it all and that's an amazing thing so could you explain why I mean look you're from you know a country well known for meat and animals and I know you're originally from England but you know throughout history you know we didn't have the choice but to to eat animals is that why this started is just just well, sociologically in the history of the human I race. I think so. We were survivalists that we don't have to be anymore, perhaps. And when crops failed, people turned. Or some people think there was a biblical time when, after the flood, you were given permission to eat other living beings. Those times have all passed. The you know flood is long gone. Mm -hmm. And we yeah, have a separate look at. There's still <laughs> well, we're not survivalists. We're still having uh, you know repercussions yes. for how we treat our planet, right? Yeah, well, that's certainly true. And there's nothing that could be have greater impact than to stop factory farming, to stop deforestation, to grow crops, to feed animals so that we can produce just this minuscule amount of protein from a cow or a chicken that we would get ordinarily in, in mass from vegetables. But no, I think what has happened now is we're spoiled. And it's human beings, as James said, who created factory farms, who created this problem, uh, who decided that they wanted fashionable leather clothes. They're no longer fashionable. We no longer have to kill animals. And we're seeing that. 
We're seeing so many changes in fashion technology. Like, finally, it's like the fashion world is catching up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And today we have leather that's made from pineapples, from um, apple pulp, from mushrooms. Uh, we have fancy cars being made with non-leather seats, with vegan leather seats. You were saying which car is, like, which the one? Ferrari. Ferrari. The new convertible Ferrari has a vegan leather as an upgrade. Tesla, of course, the Nissan Leaf, all these cars are thinking it's environmentally destructive, it's cruel to animals, consumers don't want it anymore, real leather. They want an alternative. And so going vegan gives you all the alternatives to every cruel thing. Wow. And also, I mean, like, what would the solution be? Like, if we could save and not harm animals, like, what, in your opinion, is the proper use, reason for them to be here, just to enjoy their lives Absolutely. and to live, like on the range as they were meant to and they did originally? Just like we are all here for our own reasons. We want to live, some of us want to start a family, some of us want to just enjoy life and do these things. We, we are animals too and in all the ways that matter we're the same and they share those similar um, urges to start their family, right. to live their life, to enjoy the day and they deserve to have that freedom to be able to do that. Aww. Cry. All right, thank you. We're gonna, we have more to talk about when we come back. I'm not done with you guys. We're going to keep this conversation going and go more in depth with your and James on how they became the trailblazers that they are. And